it's time to discuss the Bitcoin ETF, the ageless, endless Bitcoin ETF story. Uh, you're with uh, you're a partner in Valkyrie. Not to be cynical about it, but hey, I mean, how many years have have Dave and I sitting here been debating the Bitcoin ETF? We're we're going into retirement debating the Bitcoin ETF at this point. So you've got one. You're with Valkyrie. Uh, do one thing here. Just break this down. Number one, uh, why would this be a good year for Bitcoin finally to have an ETF. Is there something about the SEC now under this administration that will make them more amenable where they weren't in the past? Is there something about the quality or state of Bitcoin that has changed that would make the SEC more amenable? And Jeff, you know very clearly the SEC has cited many specific instances where why they don't want it, including custody issues, including the ability to control prices because a lot of it's set overseas and what they consider questionable markets. So give us an overview here. Uh, what, what, what suddenly do you think has changed that would cause the SEC to approve a Bitcoin ETF? Well, Bob, a similar approach to the way I strategically asked my wife to marry me. You know, around the 15th or 20th <laughs> time I asked, she finally said yes. But all kidding aside, I think the Bitcoin ETF and why I'm optimistic for 2021, it just gets exciting because here we are. I know we're celebrating the S&P 500 today, making a new all-time high above 3,900, but we're also celebrating Bitcoin as it nearly kissed 45,000. So as we see all this confluence of exciting data, I think we go back to why did the SEC say no for all these years? And yes, we did file Valkyrie Funds. It's a team of seasoned industry veterans led by our CEO, Leah Wall. But we have the ability and the confidence that we're seeing a change of guard at the SEC with Mr. Clayton leaving. But nonetheless, I think the maturity of the product, that maturity of Bitcoin is actually being confirmed today with Ethereum futures being traded the CME group. So an additional crypto created in the futures market. But I go back to why is it going to happen in 2021, Bob? I think it's the fact that the SEC has been watching, patiently watching, and they're really trying to make sure that trading in markets, that's the division of the SEC that has to get comfortable before any review of any filing, no matter how many filings of ETFs are out there. But once trading markets get more comfortable with the actual concept of just Bitcoin and crypto in general, I think that makes sense. And the active and passive investors, they're trying to find a solution, a remedy to own Bitcoin. Trying not to forget their passcodes and their digital walls. They're trying to find a more secure way of holding those cryptocurrencies. You take that and add on the fact that we're seeing a lot of companies like Tesla in the news today owning Bitcoin or go back to last fall when we saw PayPal, PayPal announce the fact that they're going to let 350 million of their users transact in Bitcoin or crypto. I think this is all coming together here in 2021. And more importantly, why we think we're different at Valkyrie, why we think we have confidence in our ETF. Of course, price is going to be a big piece of it, Bob. But also it's the expertise in trading markets, trading futures. And that should be assistive in adjusting the historical slippage or the historical premium to NAV and some of the other products. And the SEC is watching that component, that premium to now. And I think if they can offer a solution via an ETF, regulate it, and it can trade more accurately to the actual spot price of Bitcoin, that's the win-win solution for all active and passive investors, even the hodlers. Jeff, you are a great salesman for your Bitcoin <laughs> ETF, I have to say. But, but Dave, seriously, maturity? It, is that really is that really a reason the SEC is going to approve a Bitcoin ETF? And now well, that Elon and, Musk is endorsing it, we all know about that wonderful relationship he has with the SEC. I mean, if that doesn't get him over the goal line, I don't know what will for a cry now. Wow. Well, go ahead, you know, Dave. I think, enlighten us. You know, we definitely maturity definitely does matter. And that is effectively what the SEC has said in rejecting or asking filings to be pulled that these markets are not yet ready to be the target of ETF investors. Now, I think that that is changing. I think Gensler coming at the SEC between him and Purse, they really understand crypto and that's gotta be a good sign. I'm maybe not quite as uh, Pollyanna about it. I think maybe we're still looking at 22, but I do think it's inevitable. And I think we're starting to make that progress towards a sort of fully liquid, fully exchange traded crypto vehicle of some sort, whether it shows up in a traditional ETF or not. You know, I think the success we've seen of things like BITW and GBTC, which are not ETFs, they are pink sheet traded companies that happen to own cryptocurrencies under the hood, I think that that is really going to force the SEC's hand when we have companies like Tesla making Bitcoin a major balance sheet asset and we have companies for whom that is their whole balance sheet asset trading on the pink sheets. I think it's going to get hard for them to say no for very much longer. 
You really think so? I mean, do you, I keep going back to the reasons they said no in the past. It, there was custody problems. They, they weren't sure of the, of, of, of the security of custody. And the fact that the prices were still largely set overseas by markets they couldn't control. I, I, you know, I think I'm trying to think like a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer, but how do you cure those defects? It seems like a tough one. I know the you know, SEC. I was I, I was pretty close to the SEC, the last administration. They were terrified that five or six years from now, they were going to get hauled in front of Congress and said, are you the guys who, uh, uh, who approved ban Granny buying the Bitcoin ETF, which was at $4,000 and is now at uh, $400? I know they were really I, worried about the, the incredible volatility of that. I think no, they were think in a bit of a turning point there because I think the SEC has to do something. And one thing they can do is approve these products and put them in a structure that we all understand. The other thing they could do, which I don't think anybody wants, nor do I think is predicting, is they could come down very hard against crypto and about this whole space, you know, and start banning some of the access vehicles that we do have. I don't think that that's going to happen, but I don't think they can stand here on the head of the pin forever. Uh, and so I think we're going to see some structures that'll allow Bitcoin to show up or any crypto to show up in a regulated product, we may not may not like some of the conditions, but I do think it's going to happen. Jeff, last word on this one before I move on. No, I think you see more of a sensationalized. You're not giving enough credit to what happens at the CME group, Bob. The CME group launching another cryptocurrency future. I think that is a huge win for a Bitcoin ETF being approved in 2021. Yeah. Yeah, for my two cents on this, I'm waiting for a tethered coin. Uh, I, I'm a, I think blockchain is the revolutionary technology here. Uh, I would love to see a tethered coin, a U.S. dollar tethered coin, a, a, a euro tethered coin. Uh, that will revolutionize trading. I'll be able to send money to my friends in London. I'll be able to move things around really quickly. And I think that will take away some of the uh, uh, intense interest uh, in Bitcoin uh, as, a, as a source of payment. Uh, that's my you two cents. You can send money to your uh, friend in Chicago, go, Bob, just want... anytime you want. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, isn't it outrageous to you that it still takes three days to send, you know, $100 to London? And, and you know, J.P. Morgan Remarkable. still controls all that. And six banks essentially control all that. It makes me furious. That's why blockchain will solve all that. Blockchain will solve the real <laughs> estate problem. Blockchain could even help solve the clearing problem that we had. Yeah. We all know that. That's why it's blockchain you want to promote, folks, not Bitcoin. Sorry. Editorial, stop, Bob. <laughs> okay. <laughs>